Hey backers, my name is Albert Law. I'm a software developer here in Saskatoon and also part of Saskatoon TechWorks. My background is in electrical engineering and software development. I met Ryland back in about 2012 when he came here to TechWorks with his crazy notion of a $100 3D printer. In one of the recent hardware updates, you saw Ryland explain all the different methods and approaches he took to making the beta Peachy printer. And as a result, he needed to make uh, specific coils that went with the device. So at the beginning of the project, Ryland used to just hand wind all these coils for uh, the Peachy printer. You know, that's all fine and good, but the problem with that was inconsistency between, you know, this printer and this printer. And the, the calibration had to account for that, but sometimes couldn't. Um, he then looked into actually getting physically manufactured from some manufacturer in the States or maybe even China. But the problem with that is the actual lead time. So the time it takes for me to pick up the phone and call someone and say, I need a coil of this specification. And the time it takes for them to actually make the coil and send it to me may be up to four, four to eight weeks. And that affects you, the backer, and uh, how long it actually takes to get these printers out to you. He needed to find a solution, and the solution was Winder. If we had known exactly what kind of coil we needed, then waiting four to eight weeks once wouldn't be so bad. But we didn't really know at all, and that meant we had to test and iterate over different shapes and different types of wire in the coil to see what worked best. Now, waiting four to eight weeks multiple times could make coil design take years. And so we needed a machine that could change the coil design quickly so that we could find out what worked best. That's exactly what Winder did for us. And so, in the end, we've only ordered three of about 70 revisions that we've done on the coils. Now, there are lots of other do-it-yourself coil winders out there, but in our situation, we needed some pretty specific needs that were hard to find. One of the things we needed was a coil winder that had a very small shaft size that we were winding onto, because we didn't really even want any air core in our coil. And another thing that we needed was a coil winder that we could gradually adjust the width of the coil with, so that we could try any shape. We wanted to do a really thorough job at exploring all the possible coil designs. And because each coil has over six variables that we were really focusing on and, and trying to find out how they affected the situation, there was a lot of data to manage. So we made our coil winder automatically log all of these variables, and we also came up with a naming system so that we could label each coil and then that label would bring us back to that coil's log. We also needed a coil winder that could stop at a given number of ohms after taking into account the diameter of wire we were using. And lastly, we tried some really small diameters. Diameters like 54 gauge. When you get into wire that small, you can't even pull it off the spool without it breaking. So we had to motorize the spool and the coil and control the tension in between. Instead of keeping this tool to himself, Ryland has decided to release Winder as an open source project. All the hardware and software design files are available online. Check the update text uh, for details and links. So when the, the hardware was originally passed to me, uh, he asked me to help him refine the design and make it, uh, try and make it automated. Um, the original winder was designed for the specific purpose of winding the coils for uh, Peachy itself. So the, the coils themselves aren't that big, maybe one or two centimeters in diameter. And that's basically all it needed. Uh, the approach I took to it was to make it a little bit more modular design so that um, if you had this large spool of wire, you could actually accommodate that and have the, the winding assembly set so that you can do many different sizes, many different widths, and then it would just do it automatically for you. So the next task I had to tackle was the Arduino code. The original code itself had all the parameters hard-coded in, so every time you wanted to change you know, a specific thing, like say, instead of using 36 gauge wire, I'm using 38 gauge wire, you had to put all those numbers back into the code and re-upload it into the Arduino itself. What I did was take all that information and made a simple menu system so that you can just sit down. You don't even need the um, Arduino interface anymore. 
just access the serial port. It should come up with the menu and you hit, you know, I'm, I'm changing this, I'm changing that, and, and go and it would just wind away. I would like to thank all you backers for your continued support and patience while Ryland and his team work very, very hard day and night to try and get these printers out the door and into your houses. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Ryland and the Peachy team for giving me this opportunity to share an experience of creating new innovations just because it's great and fun. Thanks for watching guys, see you in the next update.